Good evening and welcome to the Oxford Board of Selectmen's meeting, October 18, 2022. Just like to read this into the record in accordance with Mass General Law 30A. Section 20, I am advising all those in attendance this evening that the meeting is being recorded by the Town of Oxford. In addition to the Town of Oxford, Robert King of Cobog Ave is recording the meeting as well. We'd like to start off our meeting like we do every other meeting by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. First thing we'd like to do on the agenda is approve the minutes dated October 5th, 2022. I'm looking for a motion to approve those minutes. I make that motion. Looking for a second? Second. I have a motion. I have a second. I'll call for the vote. Dennis? Abstain. Robert? Yes. Tim? Yes. And I'll vote yes. So the record show three, three affirmative, one absent, and one abstain. All right, we're fortunate tonight to have a couple of uh, presentations to a couple Eagle Scouts in town. Uh, one is Todd Sauter, Jr., and the other one is Samuel Zostant. I hope I said that right. Um, I'm going to read each citation uh, honoring these two boys, uh, and here's the first one. Samuel Zostant has been proven has proven himself to be an outstanding member of the Boy Scouts of America and has achieved the highest rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas Sam's leadership ability moved him through the ranks of this troop where he spent two years as senior patrol leader, teaching and practicing survival skills, including building a fire, being safe in the woods, and learning to cook. Sam has, Sam put his problem solving in critical thinking skills to work, planning excur excursions for Troop 147. And whereas his commitment to scouting is evidenced by his accumulation of a record 82 merit badges as a scout of Troop 147. Whereas Sam participated in various scouting adventures, including summer camps to Sea Base High Adventure in the Florida Keys, Belcher Summit in West Virginia, and Philmont in New Mexico, where he camped on an island, snorkeled, fished, tubed down a river, and ziplined. And whereas it takes years of dedication and commitment to achieve Eagle rank, and whereas the citizens of Oxford appreciate Sam's hard work in completing his Eagle Scout project of creating four little libraries for the enjoyment of all the town of Oxford. Therefore, be it resolved that we, the selectmen of the town of Oxford, and the town manor joined Sam's family and friends in congratulating him for his accomplishment and wish him continued success in all his uh, future endeavors. So congratulations, Sam. You are uh, a good representative of the youth of Oxford, and we are very proud of you as a board of selectmen and uh, town manager. So if you want to come up, we'd like to present this to you, and we can take a photo. All right, we're fortunate to have a second <laughs> certification. I'd like to read this into the record as well. Whereas Todd Soder, Jr., has proven himself to be outstanding member of the Boy Scouts of America, 
and has achieved the highest rank of Eagle Scout. And whereas it takes years of dedication and commitment to achieve Eagle rank, and Todd <coughs> has demonstrated enthusiasm in his commitment to completing the goals required to achieve Eagle Scout, including earning eight merit badges in one week. And whereas the Eagle Scout Award is a distinction that will follow him throughout life and inspire others to be role models in the, their communities. And whereas Todd's sense of wonder and love of adventure propelled him to participate in scouting opportunities, including an extended stay at Treasure Valley, camping on an island and catching shark in Florida, visiting West Virginia, trekking through the mountains of New Mexico. And whereas the Eagle Scout project Todd completed was the creation of a reflecting garden area at the First Congregational Church on Main Street in Oxford, Mass. And whereas the creation of the reflecting garden area will help bring peace to the hearts and minds of those who enjoy it. And therefore, be it resolved that we, the Board of Selectmen, the Town of Oxford, Mass, and Town Manage join Todd's family and friends in congratulating him for his accomplishments and wish him continued success in his future endeavors. So congratulations, Todd. You two have made the town uh, very proud and uh, thank you for all your efforts. If you want to come up and get this. Nope, oh, sorry, Jim. It's okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just also want to thank, I think we need to recognize the, uh, the parents of these two young men and also the scout leaders and the people that dedicate their time and put a lot of time and effort in working with these uh, young people. I know they, uh, I know Ron has been working very hard on a little uh, project that we have going on on uh, Sutton Avenue and I know the Boy Scouts have been very instrumental in helping us with that project and I know they'll be showing up another day to put some more plants in the ground. So I want to thank the scouts and the parents and the leaders for uh, doing a good thing for the town of Oxford. <clears throat> All right, next. We have a couple of appointments. Rose Wing and Melissa Moldover are, would like to be appointed to the Cultural Council. So at this time, I'm looking for a motion to appoint Rose Wing and Melissa Moldover uh, to the... Oxford Culture Council for a term of three years expire, expiring in June 30th, 2025. So I'm looking for a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. We'll call for any discussion. I'll call for the vote. Dennis? Yes. Robert? Yes. Tim? Yes. I'll vote yes. Let the record show four in the affirmative, one absent. We'd like to thank Rose and Melissa for volunteering their time and service to the town. Welcome aboard. All right, we have an application for a one-day special pouring license by Oxford Farms Sacred Cow LLC. Uh, Teresa Cohen of Sacred Cow LLC, doing business as Oxford Farms, is hosting a craft fair where she has invited Redemption Rock Brewery to attend. She has applied for a one-day special pouring license to allow for the sale of beer during the event. Uh, so I'm looking for a motion to uh, <coughs> grant this license to Oxford Farms. Uh, the event will take place at 103 Federal Hill Road on October 29, 2022 from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, looking for a motion to grant this license. I will make that motion. Second. I have a Chairman, could you include the rain date in your motion? Oh, I didn't see that. Thank you. I'm adding to this a rain date of October 30th, 2022. I'll Thanks. I'll Thanks. amend the motion to okay. include that. Robert, you're okay with the second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and I have a second. Let's call for the vote. Dennis? Yes. 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 Tim, I vote yes as well. Let the record show for any affirmative. Special pouring license has been granted. Next thing, we have some surplus uh, equipment. 
I guess. So I'm going to read the list of surplus, uh, surplus requests. I'm going to issue, I'm going to read you a list, okay, of stuff <laughs> that's going to be on surplus requests. We have a 2002 Ford F550. We have a 2002 International 2554. We have a 2012 Ford F350. We have a 2008 Ford CRVIC. We have a 2007 Ford F350. We have a 1994 John Deere 48. Uh, and we have a 2010 Toro uh, tractor, a mower. And we have a two another 2010 um, self-propelled mower. So the, the list of items are what's going to be declared as surplus. And I am looking for a motion to uh, determine that these items are, in fact, surplus and the town no longer leads them. I'll make the motion that these items are surplus. Second. Any discussion? Go ahead, Robert. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I found out from um, the DPW director that these items, um, if we approve this, will be listed on auctionsinternational.com for any um, residents of the town who might be interested in um, possibly fixing up an old DPW vehicle, if that's even possible. Okay. All right. Thank you, Robert. I will call for the vote. Then. Yes. 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 I'll vote yes. So the record show four in the affirmative, one absent. Motion passes. All right. We uh, the next thing on the uh, agenda is uh, Auto Ranch. Greg Latino uh, <clears throat> no longer needs his Class Two license, so he's closing his business to health reasons. We hope Mr. Latino is, is okay. Uh, but I am looking for a motion to uh, void that license. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right, I'll call for the vote. Yes. 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 I'll vote yes. Let the record show four in the affirmative, one absent. License, class two license is, avoid, is voided. Next thing on the agenda, we need to sign the um, town election warrant. Uh, it's requested by our town clerk, Michelle Jenkins, looking for a motion to approve and sign the town election warrant. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? Call for the vote. Dennis? Yes. 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 I'll vote yes. Let the record show four in the affirmative, one absent. All right. Moving right along. We are looking for town manager's report. Jen? Floor is yours. Sure. Haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> yeah, just since last last week for town meeting. Uh, starting out the manager's report, and I just wanted to uh, uh, commend all the department heads um, once again for having another successful town meeting. Uh, this time it was held at the middle school, which was um, unusual. We did have a little bit of a delay getting a quorum, but once again the uh, voters for uh, the town did come uh, and made sure we had that quorum and that was held on September 5th. We did have 108 voters that attended and participated and I'm, I'm pleased to, that all of the uh, 13 articles that were sponsored by department heads, boards and committees did pass with unanimous votes. And I believe this is uh, a testament to all the preparation, information and communication that's rendered about each article both in advance and um, at the actual town meeting. Uh, the next item on the uh, manager's report is uh, to update you on this uh, website development that is a um, shared administrative priority and management priority. And um, as you are aware, in September, um, I had uh, mentioned to the board that uh, we were looking to potentially uh, seek out uh, a variety of different grants. Uh, one of them was a grant uh, uh, for a community compact competitive grant and it related to inf information technology best practices. Uh, we applied for this before we even put in motion our warrant article, and I'm really <coughs> pleased um, to announce that. We have received um, a $38,000 uh, grant to assist us with updating the website. Otherwise, we would have needed to ask for even more uh, funding at town meeting, which there was a uh, generous appropriation that will help us look at hopefully adding some new features that will be very uh, customer friendly and um, interactive with the public. Um, having said that, um, I wanted to just alert the board that I'm hoping, since this is a shared uh, administrative and management goal and policy goal, 
I was hoping that um, at the next uh, board meeting that we could vote uh, to potentially add at least one member. I know Selectman Moriarty has expressed this um, as, a, as a priority uh, on a number of occasions and so has uh, Selectman Frick. And perhaps um, one or both uh, might be able to participate as community representatives um, in an ad hoc committee that we're going to form going forward once we decide who, um, if we're going to continue with uh, Civics Plus, who's done a lot of the initial website work um, that we have in existence uh, for the redesign and upgrade efforts. So please consider that. It'll be up in an upcoming agenda, and uh, we would welcome that kind of uh, input along with the consultants that we'll hire to help us with this. Uh, the next item is just to um, let the board know, um, even though at town meeting I made this announcement, this is really important and we're already getting flooded with um, <laughs> calls about uh, electricity rates. So last May, I just wanted to remind the board that I had uh, worked with our energy consultants, Good Energy, to go out to the market early uh, in advance of National Grid making their announcements for winter electric rates um, that was going to be announced in the fall. And on behalf of the town at that time, I wound up uh, locking into a new two-year rate that's going to go from 2022 to 2024 for both basic and green energy supply, uh, hoping that we would have more favorable rates um, than they were predicting because of the global uh, instability, uh, the war in Ukraine, and uh, potential inflation in the energy markets. Um, National Grid recently announced, actually during the week, that last week when we had our uh, town meeting that their rates <laughs> are going to more than double, more than double, folks. Um, they, it's going to be th almost 34 uh, cents per kilowatt. Uh, we have been paying for the last three years because of the aggregation program about 10 cents uh, per kilowatt. Um, the rates that we locked in uh, in May are actually 15 and a half cents per kilowatt for a basic rate, and the green energy alternative for some people who opt for that is 18.4 uh, cents. That's a far cry from 34 cents uh, per kilowatt. And so uh, I just wanted to, to alert the public that they're going to be getting actual letters um, that look uh, something to that effect that actually is going to allow them to compare uh, the rates uh, along with National Grid. If someone is already in the aggregation program, they're not going to have to do anything. If somebody wants to opt to um, into, they're going to have to sign up. And if somebody wants to opt out of it uh, because they've gone solar or something like that, um, they just have to alert them. So we don't handle any of this in-house um, other than to refer the public to the site, which is um, up there, Oxford. Um, uh, hyphen -cea .com, uh, and there is also on this uh, sheet that is going out to every household a, an actual telephone number, which is um, 888-683-3518. So um, this is going to be very important for people, uh, so I don't want people to be caught off guard if they're not paying attention to their supply rates on their bill. It does mean that their supplier is uh, changing from Nextera to direct, en um, direct Energy which was the only vendor uh, after we had put out. Uh, there was so much instability in the market uh, that many um, companies that typically will offer very favorable competition for market rates uh, were backing off from committing to more than six months. And we were lucky to lock in for a two-year rate. And um, they are predicting that this winter rate is not just going to be this winter. It will go into next winter. So. Um, I hope the next time good energy comes, I did not bring um, some of the savings that have already taken place for all residents and businesses. And of course, the town is part of this aggregation program too. So um, more details will come uh, with time, uh, but I did want to uh, let the public. I, I just have a question, because somebody's asked, if they're already in the program, mm -hmm. do they have to re-sign, or are they going to be automatically transferred into the, I know you mentioned it, but. It's an important point because several people have called me and asked mm -hmm. me that. I always say to people, if they really have questions, they should always um, direct their questions to good energy. But from what I understand, typically if you're already in, it will actually transfer over because they're already enlisted in the aggregation program. Should there be some kind of interruption or change or they change their account, that might mean they slip off. So they should always check and look, um, particularly as they go into the month of December going in, uh, further uh, for January 1st. Just look on the back side of your electric bill and it should say, um, and on the front of it, should say uh, 
after it you know looks like a regular national grid bill, but under supplier, it should change from next year to direct energy. And if they've got and any it questions, should say the they price call of, that number. Yep, sure. Just call that yep. number. And the price of um, the kilowatt on the back side, typically okay. you'll see it. And if it's not coming up with the 15 and a half cents, which is the basic rate, uh, you know, or 10 cents, but jumps to 34 cents, yeah, make the call right away. All right. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, early voting is the next thing. I just wanted to um, once again uh, alert the public that starting this coming Saturday, the town's clerk's office will begin early voting, and um, that will be at the um, senior center. And of course, this is for the November 8th uh, state election, and the uh, early voting starts uh, on that Saturday. Uh, it goes from about 10 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, and there are a whole series of other dates. Um, I know in the next slide that actually has that. As you can see, it goes all the way up to November 4th, and most of the time it, it mirrors uh, what we're having um, for office hours, but there are a few that go into a, like a Wednesday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So if somebody really is afraid they might not be able to um, be here to vote, um, they can do that. Also, all the mail-in ballots um, have um, arrived uh, last week, and our clerk's office have already mailed out um, over 1,663 requested ballots. So um, I'm just alerting residents, be looking in your mailboxes for your ballots that you requested. Uh, so once you complete them, uh, you can either mail them back or if you really want to make sure they get um, right here at the town hall, we have this new secure uh, ballot box uh, that is monitored 24-7 and they can drop those in the new ballot box to make it easier for them as well. Uh, the fifth uh, item on my manager's report is trick-or-treat, everybody. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to make the board aware that the manager's office is trying to help the board also in getting the word out about trick-or-treat. I did have my first call today. Just want you to know, a resident wanted me to see if we could change it. Um, I haven't gotten back to them. It was a late in the afternoon that I listened to the message. Uh, but it is an official date um, that the board sets for October 35th, 31st. Uh, 2022 from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I only wanted you to know that we are putting it on our website, social media. It's out on the electronic board, which is probably why I got the call today. Uh, and it was also on our social media. And everyone, especially our motor vehicle drivers and passer-throughs um, that are coming through, please be traveling safe that uh, evening while children and families are out. Um, and for those people who aren't aware, uh, the board in the past had voted at one point in time to change the date. And it was not a pretty thing um, that that uh, that actually transpired. So I'm just alerting the board. You should go back and maybe look at those minutes. But it was all over, all over the country, um, and it brought a lot of attention that the board at that time was not looking to have done all over trick or treating. So it is going to be October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, the sixth item is just to uh, make the board aware that I can't believe it's almost uh, November and pretty soon our Veterans um, Appreciation Luncheon will be here. And that is um, slated for November 9th, um, Wednesday, at the um, Oxford Senior Center. Uh, because it's become so popular, um, the um, actual uh, seatings are two, one at 11 o'clock in the morning and one at 1.30. And um, the attending veterans uh, this year, our, our veteran service agent uh, has been working very, very, uh, I think, tirelessly with our uh, senior director. And even though we had it at Carbuncle Beach House on the previous two occasions, um, they wanted to uh, put it here at the senior center once again where it used to be. We have a number of seniors that want to offer their services to volunteer uh, to serve the seniors, uh, the uh, veterans, and their uh, guests. Every uh, attending veteran is um, also allowed to have um, a guest. And uh, I said that Dave has been working, Dave Adams, who's our veteran service officer, has been working very hard. Um, just to let people know, um, this year uh, we always give the veterans some kind of special gift and acknowledgement from the town, but um, each veteran that is going to be attending, from what I understand, is going to be getting one of these beautiful books. And it's a book that um, Dave has been able to um, acquire through his efforts and connections uh, related to the um, 
the uh, granddaughter for uh, General Patton who actually uh, has a foundation that helped uh, put this book together and it's really beautiful and it has a lot of beautiful stories in it and uh, I just wanted people to be aware that we uh, we do take this uh, this event very seriously we take veterans issues in this town very seriously and I know the board the uh, administration all of us uh, want to do right when we are giving acknowledgement and tribute uh, so this will be in advance of our uh, veterans uh, day observances um, and we already have 90 attendees registered this far in advance so um, obviously board members that can attend uh, please let Dean know and Dave Adams know and uh, we'll make sure to to have you there as well uh, the next item is a uh, community center forum I saw a lot of those oh I don't know what's happening here I think they're out of order <laughs> that's what's happening so um, I, I know two members of the board um, attended and I think a third might have watched it um, I, I don't know if they watched it on TV or not but I think so uh, but I wanted to give the entire board and community a little bit of background we did have um, Prior to town meeting on September 28th, we had um, in the Oxford Community Center Gymnasium, uh, we had a well-attended and informative uh, session uh, or forum uh, that included our uh, staff, some members who are here, consultants from Berry and Dunn, which are the consultants we hired to do a feasibility study about the community center. And um, the whole point of that was to provide some progress about um, what uh, has transpired to date uh, with some conceptual visioning and the facility concepts um, that have been um, provided uh, about what the current um, conditions are in the building the types of programming the spatial needs coupled with future desired intergenerational programming uh, the whole point of the forum was to give um, people a, a bit of a background on how we arrived here so one of the first things that we looked at was the fact that we had um, commissions um, some money uh, that was going to be used for a feasibility study as well as we have a master plan that actually highlighted uh, the community center and the DPW headquarters that's two areas um, where we needed real and uh, improvements in the facilities and um, you know people who may not be very familiar with the community center it is become a really vibrant um, component of uh, municipal government services and programs and what I mean by that is you know it was a building that goes back almost 74 years in age 1948 and um, in 2004 uh, was the last time uh, they, it was used um, uh, as a school and um, even though we have school administration on the top floor uh, there was improvements that were made to the very um, top floor and only that floor so when you go by the rest of the building on the other um, the first floor and the basement are all uh, from like 1948 with very little real um, infrastructure improvements and so we um, contracted with Barry and Dunn after we got the money to go forward with an actual uh, feasibility study so um, thanks to the efforts of people like um, our DPW and facilities uh, director here uh, Jared Duval and Shelley Lambert for the OCC um, in terms of programming you can see that since we've actually added capacity in for staffing uh, they offer 21 uh, groups for fitness they offer uh, youth social craft and activity development they do preschool age craft story and movement programs they do all kinds of drop in the gym basketball pickleball um, they've done um, some floor hockey in the past they also look at and, and host um, and organize all of the uh, gymnasium and beach house rentals they do a lot of events uh, specifically for age um, different age groups so you can see all the different functions that they do hold um, as part of their overall objectives in uh, running programs but they also have taken on a lot of the socio-cultural uh, programs that are offered seasonally and also on the common from everything from teddy bear picnics and movies on main and an upcoming scarecrows festival which is in the final part of the report um, to all of these um, real athletic events and um, also a whole summer operation of the beachfront and um, splash pad and I say this is kind of important because not every community has it um, a community center and when you look at the building and I hope some people had an opportunity to see it 
uh, as they walked in. You can see that um, it has a very old, antiquated um, HVAC system. We did have to put in a very expensive emergency boiler a couple years ago. And again, it was because we were, you know, we were caught in between whether we want to renovate or whether we want to actually look at how we can uh, get as much life out of the building before we can make a decision about what to do. But nevertheless, you needed heat in the building, and we had to, I think, Jared, if I remember correctly, that was something like 680000 or something like that. I thought it was that much. Yeah, okay. Oh, that was before you. I think it was Sean. Sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. But anyway, you can see there are major problems with um, space that is unusable and uh, space that's just not appropriate, especially for children, uh, that would need a lot of renovations and concerns about um, safety in the building. So we only use the areas that are usable, and the rest of it is just in need of renovations, whether it's the bathroom, whether it's some of the infrastructure, <laughs> windows, um, all of that. So out of all of the... Uh, research that was done by the uh, consulting firm. The big thing, um, the three takeaways from everybody was that um, instead of building new someplace and demolishing the building, which makes no sense because the town put over a million dollars in the third floor, this was before my time. I would have told them to renovate the whole building at that time, but, uh, you know, money was tight and they did at least for the school administration, which, you know, on the top, yet that's one of the views of that third floor, and it's, and it's quite lovely and it functions uh, really well, I know. Uh, Justin Ledoux had uh, every day gone there, and uh, I think he would say that it's, it's a pretty nice, nice place. Um, we'd like the rest of the building to look like that. So one of the key things was we're not going to build new, uh, but we would keep the community center on its current site and renovate or reconstruct the building. That's the first concept that is coming out of all of the deliberation and uh, the research that has been done. The second one was to create an intergenerational community center. There was a lot of dialogue um, with um, our senior uh, Council on Aging Resources, and uh, we uh, had been able to glean that there was indeed a lot of interest from our senior seniors um, in town that would love to have a, a greater uh, ability to interact uh, within the community center uh, fabric. And, um, and I think the third one was we should be flexible with whatever kind of design or reconstruction or concepts we put forward to the community that there should be flexibility for potential expanded programming. And we're seeing that now as we build capacity in with the staff. And then the final couple things I'm just going to go through quickly because I'm not the consultants, but I did want to provide. If you look at the site plan uh, diagram that they put, you can see um, where our pre-existing um, kind of our uh, basketball courts are behind. And you know if you go behind the actual existing community center, you'll see the big gym that's there from 1948. That's the area that they would probably more than likely want to have the community to think about perhaps putting an addition on. Um, the blue section up there that you see is the existing building and they would add on um, square footage in that area. Um, this is gonna be very hard, the next two slides for people to see, but basically there's a first floor diagram concept that they put there um, that looks at um, potentially having areas for our senior center, including a large uh, place uh, for events and their um, meals um, that they have and many other programs that they would host, along with some fitness um, areas, along with some actual um, office areas, and uh, that would be looking at trying to get as much as they can on the first floor for it to be very welcoming and to have sort of that ability to host more than one um, type of um, uh, program or activity or department. Uh, the second floor diagram is looking more for that whole um, uh, sports or athletic areas along with more uh, uh, fitness studios and actual places to um, host meetings and the like. Now. Looking at it from a, you know, a blueprint uh, concept, which is not really a blueprint, but to scale, uh, you can't really tell what they were thinking, right? 
But the next slides will tell you, when you look at it, um, this is what they're thinking. If you know what the existing building looks like, it's over here to the left, that addition that they would want to put on um, and, and would recommend um, at this point in time, while they're still gathering information, this was a concept. This was a vision based on all of the people they spoke with about what they'd like to do. The next one is another sort of view of it, looking from the basketball courts um, in the backside of the cemetery or where the old red school annex building was, uh, because it's been taken down, thanks to, to Jared at this moment. Um, you'll see that that's a view looking towards Main Street, which um, looks very different than um, the old gymnasium that we have now. And then the, um, oh, this is another view um, more towards the um, I call it almost like the alcove that is behind uh, 351 Main Street, which is the old, old school building. Um, this would be a, a courtyard and more of the senior area that could drive up, drop off, and um, go right into um, the functional area that could be for our seniors. And then, of course, the rest of the building there. And this is just showing you um, the whole idea was to create, instead of a closed-in um, area right now when you come into the community center, you met with these old stairs um, and uh, no ability to have uh, anybody know whether someone is really in the building or not, except that, that they get put on our, our camera system. There's no welcome, there's no functional space. Uh, what they tried to sort of get us to think about, and uh, none of us really knew what they were gonna put together, was to think about this openness and the ability to feel like you can have um, both events in the outside area as well as the upside area. So. I think the next couple ones do a little bit more interior concepting, uh, so you can see what it would look like. I don't know if that would be our furniture or our clothes, but I would tell you, or we all look like that, but, but that's just a rendering. And uh, so that would be sort of like a lobby, and this would be um, the interior first floor where one of this larger function areas, like I said, looking out, um, a lot of the you know seniors that were sort of asked for input love this kind of exterior garden uh, and patio where they might be able to host events and also interior for a facility concept. And of course, the, um, the last um, upper slide is looking at the upper floor that they rendered, showing again this whole glass in lots of light, lots of solar passive light, and then also inside a very large um, area that you could have multiple sports. Just to give you an idea how many kids, they have over 200, I think last year over 250 kids that were signed up for the basketball league. 250 kids. So when we struggle to have, you know, that as a seasonable opportunity for them in the winter time, it's because it's very popular. So that is what I just wanted to provide. Uh, so where are we at now? This is not any done deal. This is the very beginning. It's the beginning of a lot of um, months of work of providing them with everything from original blueprints to looking and examining the actual structure and then talking with people. And what the next steps would be after all of this is they're going to actually give us a report. Um, the point of the forum was to show everybody and ask people for feedback. And so there were several stations um, with actual uh, concept drawings like this asking people um, what did we um, what did we include that they liked, uh, what have we missed, uh, and what do they think uh, they could see for expanded programming. And that will all be included and we also have on our website uh, we've been asking people for that kind of input. That's going back to the consultant. Consultant will put that into their entire uh, proposal for the finalization of the report, and then we'll get it back. So when we get it back, obviously I'm going to share it with the board, but I don't have that in hand. But this was um, one of the, the um, opportunities to begin that dialogue. So there'll be a lot more discussion as we go forward about um, you know what it is that we may want to present in the future and what... Um, their final recommendations will be for facility concepts and obviously um, the um, costs are going to be uh, very much uh, important in that uh, but uh, how do we align that with the type of expectation and programming that we'd like to see. So I appreciate the board's attention on that. I'll try to uh, go through the rest of my report pretty expediently. Oh, um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may. Sure. Um, to the Madam Town Manager, um, could you just tell the community where on the town's website that they could find that information and submit their feedback if that's available at this time? Well, I know we posted the actual um, thing, I believe, right on the uh, front web page. I can't remember, to tell you honestly, uh, Robert. But I know we also, I had asked uh, Kaylee from our production 
um, coordinator for a cable um, to also provide that. I thought they did that on the social media uh, page, but I could have sworn that, um, oh, it may also be at um, Shelley Lambert's for the OCC uh, there as well, but um, I don't have it right in front of me, So, um, but I would be more than happy to, to share that. And uh, actually, after sharing it tonight, I'll make sure that we do it more prominently. It, it may have gotten lost with all of the <laughs> advertising we've had we've had a whole number of events that have been coming up plus town meeting plus elections so um, if it's there it may have been um, done more closer to the 28th date Are you so looking for the email to send it to okay okay um, so I will I'll double check on that and see what we can do uh, the next is just to um, let you all know that today um, we uh, had a very successful auction um, am I thanks there, Justin's okay. Oh, we had a very successful auction, <laughs> and uh, it was uh, held up here. And we did two of three properties, um, just so that the um, town is aware. This has been an initiative um, that we had started uh, management wise uh, to try to reduce um, the number of uh, properties we have in town that um, have not been paying taxes um, or we have not been able to collect. Uh, revenue from and so um, at this point in time today uh, we did sell uh, 117 Main Street which was formerly a, um, a contaminated uh, gas station um, that had been um, cleaned up uh, and had some um, regulations placed upon it by the DEP but we did have uh, somebody who was well aware of all of the circumstances and bought that and then uh, 445 Main Street which is the parcel or the property up above had a lot of interest in it and actually um, sold for 175,000 so a total of 250,000 but to put this in perspective uh, we had not been prior to um, my coming here really focused on this as a financial way um, to to look at our status in terms of uh, best practices and so since um, I've hired uh, our treasurer collector it has been a priority and um, looking at all of the parcels we changed our tax title attorney uh, treasure collector um, sends out notification when people are late on their taxes right away and our tax title process um, has been much more streamlined the whole point here is to just bring revenue and bring taxes um, online uh, that need to be paid and uh, I will say though in a year and a half we have brought in through three different auctions 1.2 million dollars that did not exist here in our revenue stream and I think that is an important uh, thing it's it's easy to talk about generating revenue it's a different thing to actually make it happen and I want to thank um, Jillian uh, Patch our treasure collector uh, the Zika's group for working very hard um, in you know providing all of the external uh, marketing for this and uh, our legal counsel a tax title attorney um, Peter Brown uh, again it was very successful and I'm, I'm proud to uh, see that um, having occurred today so um, I wanted to let the board know that and um, I think that the next item is um, to let people also know um, that we uh, uh, yeah okay we, we skipped I'm sorry so the next one was just to let the board know that uh, I was uh, a participant in the uh, Webster Dudley Oxford Chamber of Commerce um, they had an event uh, where I was a guest speaker along with um, two of my colleagues and um, I think it was it was very uh, it was well attended and we made some new contacts with some businesses in town who um, want to do more in partnering with the town so I think that was really good uh, but um, just to let you know I had focused on how to grow local business in Oxford um, I know we have a lot of discussions oftentimes about how wonderful the beautification efforts are so we decided to kind of focus um, my team on looking at what we plan to do uh, to highlight that kind of communication with the business community so we talked about how we're leveraging um, grants to support our growth in town 
and I looked at all the different grants um, and talked about the major ones that relate to historic preservation, beautification, um, energy savings, um, best practices, and also some economic development ones, which we're just starting to bear the fruits of um, as we're putting out um, our feelers and actual grant applications. Uh, we talked about how we're using um, a whole uh, branding strategy called Onward Oxford that isn't just about a newsletter. It's really about uh, much more than that. It's about uh, providing enhanced cable features on things that are important, including our businesses, uh, whether it's ribbon cuttings or what new businesses are coming to town. Um, there is a whole um, effort that we're going to be starting uh, on two fronts in January. One is the brown uh, bag uh, lunch bag uh, business series, which uh, the point here is to highlight and give people um, an opportunity to learn about our existing businesses by featuring them and getting them an opportunity to kind of explain what their business does and, and how the local community can support them. Also to look at these whole seasonal community events that have been bringing people downtown based on our master plan and based on what we think are, is really important. So. I think we we talked about that, and I think that the business community that spoke to me afterwards thought that was really um, in, interesting. And of course, they loved the idea that we were trying to feature more business um, involvement. Um, we talked about pilots and partnership. We talked about um, pop-up space opportunities that we're going to focus on. We talked about that at town meeting with this new purchase of 82. Charlton Street. We're talking about also launching a, um, a storefront improvements uh, micro grant program. I'm going to be working closely with um, uh, Tony Sousa, uh, and we are going to be looking at how to offer our business community um, resources, actual funds, to make changes uh, that they've long uh, desired to give them a better curb appeal or better, uh, c you know, communication with the public of where they are and what they offer. Uh, and I will be talking to the board about how we're going to be doing that um, as it gets closer to um, having developed the application form and how we're going to execute some of that and where we're going to identify some funding um, to do that. Uh, by local campaigns, uh, tonight you uh, approved a, a one-day pouring license for a basically new farm in town. And um, buying local campaigns are something that is not just about farms, but it's also about uh, retail and it's also about um, uh, food eateries as well. And um, Tony, Susan, and I have talked about creating a small business passport program that has allowed um, other communities to feature some of their businesses. Uh, just so that people know, we did provide a lot of um, hand-holding as best as possible through the pandemic. And this is our way of now trying to finally have uh, resources, time, and um, hopefully not the distraction of a pandemic to really continue the work that we had already started in earnest. We talked about um, some of the zoning changes that is really important to the community. Um, just to remind people, we've done over nine changes in the past two years. Um, we've you know, expanded our village business district. We've done cluster development. We've done um, you know, changing and expanding our general business in Route 20. We've done hotel siting, which by the way, was very interesting. Hi. Uh, was very interesting to hear that I guess Nichols College has been talking about building a hotel and it's become quite competitive between the towns of Dudley and Webster and they both spoke before me and I said, oh, well, we, I said, I guess we're going to have to throw ourselves in the mix because we actually created uh, opportunity now in our zoning bylaws uh, for a potential um, hotel and, and it was a little bit of a funny thing where we all said we we're going to get in line from one another to talk to the president about that. So we'll see which town maybe perhaps gets that, uh, but we'll have to maybe uh, explore that. And of course, Brownfield's assessment, um, technical assistance, site readiness, those are all things that we have been doing and um, in, in some of the businesses that were especially uh, commercial, light, industrial, know that. So we just also shared a number of new businesses that have come, uh, whether it's TC Controls, Chase Corporation is also t dealing with us right now, talking about expanding their footprint. We're walking them right now through a state process um, where they had gotten grant money. Um, and during the pandemic, um, the uh, one of their grant requirements is the number of additional new jobs, and they fell short by a couple I think six jobs um, that they were going to provide, but 
also it was in their calculation. They welcomed our support um, and ability to act as one of their advocates, and those are the kinds of things that we do. Uh, so I just wanted you to know that uh, it's not just about talking to the community here. It's also talking to the business community, and I think we've been very effective to do that. Um, I look forward to being able to partner more uh, with um, different um, uh, businesses as well as our counterparts to the south uh, in hopes that we can do some other regional work together. Uh, the, uh, we've already done the public land auction, which was taken um, off of um, the uh, out of turn. And so uh, once again, uh, my office has been contacted uh, about the Oxford bulk item drop off. Get ready. <laughs> it's coming October 29th, Saturday, uh, you know, again, from eight in the morning to three in the afternoon at the transfer station. Anybody living in the center of town to the north um, of Oxford, uh, that is your day to go. Um, please, no mattresses and box rings. That's off limits this time around. Um, or is it November 1st? The, does the first wave get to do it or no? Nobody, Nobody does. does. Okay. We're just cutting it off altogether. Okay. And then November 5th is for anybody living in the center of town all the way to the south. Um, again, there's a whole list on the DPW website of what we actually um, allow, but um, this is very unique, and not many communities have bulk drop-off days twice a year. So um, thanks to Casella and uh, DPW staff, which are there all day on a Saturday to help um, uh, show uh, residents where, where it to go and how to... Uh, be of assistance to uh, remove items from their car. The next one is just to let everybody know that we had a, a great public safety day and um, it was our first inaugural one. Uh, there was a lot of planning that went into this. Um, I thought we would show the little clip uh, that our cable series put together. It's just two minutes, but um, it gives you an idea if you weren't able to stop by. Um, you know, to be able to come and um, see that event. And uh, if uh, I can have you just put that on, that would be terrific. And We're glad to have this public safety day today to uh, give the people of Oxford an opportunity to come out and meet this uh, public safety personnel and hopefully inspire some people, especially the younger people walking around today that maybe want to go into public service someday. We're glad to see people come out today and uh, hopefully this will be an inaugural event and we can move forward every year. My name is Shannon. I'm here with Massachusetts Vest Dog. We're an all nonprofit, uh, all volunteer 501c3 and we provide bulletproof vests and essential equipment for police dogs here in Massachusetts. All the merchandise that you see here is up for sale for donations um, and all of the money goes right back into our organization organization to help police dogs in the state. We're here today at our Public Safety Day, uh, kicking off Fire Prevention Week. Uh, the theme this year is make sure you know your escape routes throughout your house and where your meeting place is. I'm Nicole Giles, the project manager over at Hodges Village. Today we're here on the Public Safety Day with our 17-foot uh, Boston Whaler and a bunch of life jackets. We're uh, teaching kids how to put life jackets on and uh, how to vote safely. Hi, I'm here today from District Attorney Early's office um, with some safety information, prevention, education information. We do a lot of talks with students about bullying and cyber safety. Um, we do adult events as well, like identity theft and fraud. So just handing out some parent information, student information to stay safe. Hey everyone, my name is Robert Cross. I am the pastor of Connections Church here in Oxford. And so what we do is we do this amazing stuff. Our church went and bought that police cruiser, inflatable for the kids, and we got an obstacle course and a soccer dartboard. And you know, we just want to be out here in the community, supporting our community. And so we just love this idea. Today is the public safety day, and so we're excited to be a part of this. I'm Lois Lewis. I'm the Medical Reserve Corps Coordinator for the Worcester Regional Area. Basically, we just work to support local public health as much as possible, as well as local emergency management and as many other organizations within our communities as possible. I'm here today uh, at Public Safety Day. We have some great goodie bags that we've been handing out with some information about different events we have going around town. Hi, this is DPW Director Jerry Duval. We're here at the inaugural Oxford's Public Safety Day. Very excited for this event. I think it's great to raise awareness as to what Public Works has to offer and look forward to this uh, event for years to come. <laughs> like, I don't know. Did you go to that? 
Oh, it was, it was. So we're looking forward to that. I just want to give a big uh, shout out to our police department, our fire department, and uh, EMS, as well as our public works and our board of health. You know, obviously it requires a lot of um, communication and uh, trying to get everybody together on a Saturday, um, even whether it's from the district attorney's office or um, any other uh, state agency is not always an easy thing. So I really applaud them, and um, I think we'll you know continue to have a great uh, public safety day going forward in the future, uh, as well as educational information for uh, kids and their families. Um, the next is just to let you know that even though I announced this at town meeting, we've already had four people come in and buy it because of that announcement. Uh, this is all to benefit our historical commission, and I know they're not always here, but this is the Oxford um, History Memory Book uh, that was published in 1988. It's a beautiful hard copy. I forgot to bring my copy up here tonight. Uh, and, and while the supplies last, you can get it actually into our um, treasure collectors. I know if you hit that one more time, it'll show you that it's $17.95. I know it happens, uh, which is great. Uh, so there are a few more. Um, this is the last time I'm going to mention it. So get it while you can and uh, learn from your past uh, for the future. And speaking of future events, uh, we have our third annual Scarecrows on the Common event this coming Saturday. Um, October 22nd from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Jocelyn Park. Uh, we hope, and maybe the scouts can actually do an entry. I know we're going to be trying to put one in for the town hall, maybe the Board of Selectmen. It could be a way to all partner together. Uh, that it's a really great event. There is a fair associated with that with vendors. Um, it's not too late to register. It's not too late to bring your crow down um, and put them on the common, and it's a great way to bring uh, people all downtown. We look forward to that, and some you'll see some businesses already starting to put <coughs> their scarecrows out as well. And then um, just that our community center is really ramping up um, a lot of events um, which um, have not actually existed in the past. One's called Bubble Bubble Toil and Trouble, October 20th uh, at 9 o'clock. Um, the morning or it's Friday, October 21st at 1 p.m. Um, it is something that you have to register for, um, but again, you can go online to OxfordMassMyRec.com. And there's also a Halloween preschool age yoga that's going to unleash the wonders of Zen for your little monsters. Um, <laughs> that I think is so cute the way they said that. I didn't come up with that. They did. Um, uh, Thursday, October 27th, or Friday, October 28th, uh, both the same, 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. You register online. It's just 10 bucks a class. It's great. Um, kids are enjoying them, and um, that's what our community sent us here. Um, once again, uh, to the members of the board, thank you for your attention for the longer um, report, uh, but I just wanted to be able to get that information out to you. And that would conclude my report to the board. Thank you very much, Jen. Very informative. At this time, I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 I'll vote yes. Meeting adjourned.